Ooh, pretty colors. Nepal. Nepal. Nepal! Huh? What? You were completely zoned out. What happened? Oh, I found these really tasty-looking mushrooms on the ground, and I just had to try one. You know you shouldn't eat things you find lying on the ground. This isn't a video game. The Underdark can be a strange and unusual place in most D&D worlds, filled with its own underground ecosystems unlike anything found on the surface world. And something frequently found in such environments is mushrooms. Our own world includes a myriad of these fungi, so a fantasy world should include plenty of its own. But why stop at mundane mushrooms when magic is so prevalent in these worlds? Why not add a few enchanted mushrooms to the mix to spice things up in your underground adventures? Adding a handful of these decaying consumables to your player's inventory will make their travels through these caves and caverns far more memorable. Liaman's Tiny Hut is an invaluable spell for adventurers seeking a safe and secure place to rest in the wild, but not every party has access to this incantation. Fortunately, there is an enchanted mushroom to fill this need. Affectionately known as cottage shrooms, these thick-stemmed fungi can be replanted on any surface, immediately growing into a mushroom-shaped cottage that functions as the Liaman's Tiny Hut spell. After eight hours, the cottage shroom crumbles into dust and disappears. Unused cottage shrooms can be sold for 100 gold pieces each to mages familiar with their use. A less friendly magical fungus is Nightmare Rot. These dark toadstools are highly toxic, requiring a DC 13 constitution save of anyone who ingests one. Failure deals 3d6 necrotic damage, while a successful save deals half that amount. However, the primary use of Nightmare Rot is to alter spells. When used as an additional spell component, this converts any damage dealt by the spell into necrotic damage. These rare specimens sell for 500 gold pieces each. For underground adventurers in need of allies or aid while traveling, there are coney caps. These simple fungi spawn from myconid spores and help to replenish populations of the mushroom folk that have been devastated by aggressors. Once fully grown, each coney cap transforms into an adult myconid. However, plucking one early stunts the growth, but retains the magic of the mushroom. Throwing an immature coney cap onto the ground causes 1d3 adult myconids to spawn adjacent to that location. These mushroom folk can communicate telepathically with the creature who summoned them, and will serve the individual for one hour or until reduced to zero hit points, at which time they rot away. While myconid communities guard coney caps fiercely, their spores sometimes travel beyond their borders, creating small clusters in the wild. Such items can be sold for 100 gold pieces each to subterranean merchants, such as Durgar or Deep Gnomes. Those seeking to enhance their own combat power or gain a greater degree of stealth will find giant killers quite useful. Inspired by the food and drink in Alice in Wonderland, as well as the famous mushroom from the Super Mario Bros. series, I thought you said this wasn't a video game. Go away, you're not helping. These innocuous looking fungi can cause the target to grow or shrink. Eating the cap of the mushroom functions as the enlarge spell, while eating the stem works as the reduce spell. An individual can end the effect early by ingesting the remaining portion of the mushroom, but this bit rots away after a minute as the effects of the giant killer end. Soldiers and spies who know of these mushrooms will pay as much as 200 gold pieces for them. For an even greater degree of espionage, spelunkers should seek out an exotic mushroom known as foresight fungus. While poisonous in nature, the toxins produced by the fungus are necessary to gain its full effect. When ingested, the imbiber must make a DC-12 constitution save, or take 2d6 points of poison damage and become incapacitated for 10 minutes. Success on the save or an immunity to poison negates the damage and incapacitated condition, but also prevents the user from gaining any benefit from the plant. On a failed save, either voluntarily or due to a low roll, the user suffers the effects mentioned previously. However, the individual also falls into a trance, during which time they are under the effects of the scrying spell. When using a foresight fungus to scry on a being, the target has disadvantage on their wisdom save to avoid being observed. While dangerous to use, these mushrooms are highly prized by diviners and can sell for 1,000 gold pieces each. The mushrooms described in this video are almost exclusively found in the Underdark. Travels through this subterranean world can provide you with several opportunities to introduce these exotic fungi to your players. Here are a few examples. The party stumbles upon a mushroom farm run by a deep gnome, but the farmer is being assaulted by a ravenous carrion crawler. Should they aid the gnome, he rewards them with a single nightmare rot or several giant killers. 
The Myconid village welcomes the PCs into their community, eager to trade with the surface dwellers. The mushroom folk offer cottage shrooms in exchange for trinkets and gear from the outside world. As the group leaves, a DC-15 nature check will identify a cluster of coney caps near the outskirts of the village. The PCs come across the scene of a recent battle. Six fallen Durgar warriors surround the body of an Umberhulk, its carapace marked with the symbol of Loth, the Spider Queen. Nearby is a small cave with an entranced drow priestess inside. In one hand, she holds a potion of healing, while the other holds a bag of foresight fungus. Unless the party kills her outright, she eventually wakes and examines the carnage outside the cave. With her bodyguard dead, she asks the PCs to escort her back to the border of her home territory, offering the remaining fungus as a reward along with an explanation of their power once she is safe. Without the drow's aid, identifying the effects of the foresight fungus requires a DC-20 nature check, with advantage if the examiner is also proficient in arcana. That does it for this episode. If your party's adventures lead them deep into the caves and caverns of your world, consider enhancing their journey with a few of these enchanted mushrooms. Until next time, I'm David Watches. Pretty colors. And thanks for watching. Special thanks to my longtime friend Bill Batchelor for creating the logo for this channel, and to Dylan Smith for the character art used in this and other videos. I couldn't have done it without them. I'd also like to thank Murto for providing hand-painted artwork for this episode. You can find a link to Murto's D&D and art channel in the description below. For more D&D tips, check out these hot videos.